Hey guys, Ivan here, welcome to another video. In this video we have a couple of very interesting topics to discuss and we are starting with this one, it's about Brandon Curry and his Mr. Olympia placing. He was, he's a former Mr. Olympia champion and this year he placed fourth. Behind Nick, behind Derek, behind Hadi and the question is why this happened. So Brandon Curry posted this post, it's him posing two days out of Mr. Olympia after his last workout and as you can see he looked huge here, I think this was the biggest version of Brandon Curry we ever saw and this was before he carved up completely so he does look a little bit flatter here than he did on stage but what I wanted to say was the reason he placed that low and yes fourth is low for Brandon Curry is because of conditioning so as you can see right here, he is big, he is massive, and Abdullah, his coach, told us that he is gonna try to bring Brandon as big as possible. And as you can see, it's not that his body fat percent was high, he was lean all around, his glutes were, were in, he was, he was conditioned, but he could have been a little bit leaner, you can see the upper glutes and his lower back, which are Brandon Curry's problem regions, he could have been leaner there, but I think it was more so that they tried to bring him as full as possible, so they probably carved him up a little bit too much, and they did not dehydrate him enough or at all, and because they tried to bring him as big as full as possible, I don't think he was ever really depleted, I think he stayed full the entire prep, so he really wasn't digging deep for conditioning. There is another reason why his separation was pretty much non-existent, as you can see there was no separation on his physique, anywhere like he was big and lean and full and round but not separated take a look at these photos from the stage look at how massive he was especially in that upper body i'm pretty sure nobody on that stage had this crazy roundness like he was really full and really round but there was no separation whatsoever no cuts no details especially in those front quads nothing was happening there, it all looked dead, look at his legs, no separation, no depth in those cuts, nothing, and his chest also, his shoulders, he used to have better conditioning before, he was never really the conditioning guy, he was always a roundness, fullness kind of bodybuilder, this year he brought that to another level, but he also brought conditioning to a lower level, and that's why he plays so low, in my opinion. Now, as far as the reasons why he looked the way he looked, as far as his approach, I mentioned a couple of things, but there's another thing I wanted to mention, and that is, I believe, in order to achieve this kind of fullness, you need to use a lot of insulin. And I think that was the case with Brandon. I think over there in Kuwait, they, they stuff these guys with a ton of insulin and sugar, and they get so big, so huge, so full, especially in combination with GH, and they do get freaky, they do get big and full and round, but in some cases, it doesn't work too well in their favor, as it didn't this year. Here's another example of the same thing, Samson Dauda, who is coached by Milos Archev, and you guys know that Milos is really big on insulin, and in this comparison you can see the same kind of look, right, like the roundness, the fullness is there, but no separation, both of these guys look smooth and not super conditioned. Could you make an argument that Samson could have placed higher than Brandon? Maybe because of legs, but not really, I wouldn't say so. I think the judging was done right. Uh, look at the comparison between the arms and shoulders. Like Brandon was really ahead of Samson in that, in that region. So he was definitely bigger, more round, more massive. But as far as that look, they, had, they both had that smooth, soft look that you get from a lot of insulin. And I think that's why this happened, I think both of them brought crazy fullness, and it worked in Samson's favor, it was good enough to beat everybody else below that top 6, but as far as cracking the top 3 or winning the show, you need to have that crispiness, you need to have better separation, more details, and if you look big like this, it's hella impressive, you will be top 4, but you can't really win the Mr. Olympia, so Brandon needs to find a better combination of fullness and conditioning, hopefully it's fixable, and hopefully we'll see him better next year. Brandon Curry doesn't really need to explain what happened, we all pretty much know, we heard what Abdullah had to say before the Mr. Olympia, and we saw what was going on on that stage, but somebody who owes us an explanation would be William Bonek, 
In my prediction video, I had him in third. I expected William Bonek from Boston Pro or from Iron Classic, but without a gyno, and I thought that version of William Bonek would have placed in top three. This was not a good version of William Bonek. This was not Bonek at his best. What was happening here exactly? It's really hard to tell. From what I heard from people who were watching it from the first row, they say he was flat. He wasn't as full as he usually is, but based on the live stream, I think he was just downsized. When he's not super massive, his blockiness comes to light. You can see that he is not very well shaped guy. He doesn't have the best silhouette and his blocky waistline is really noticeable as it was at this show. And overall, he was not just a flat, but he was also kind of watery. And that is basically what he explains because he just made an explanation. He just made a statement. He posted this photo in which he didn't really go over what happened at this show. But I asked him a question. I told him, man, you owe us an explanation. Can you explain what happened? What went wrong? And he kind of explained it to us, but not in too much detail. What he says is, I don't want to be that guy with excuses. All I can say is I messed up my last day or two, maybe because of lack of sleep or I pushed too hard in the gym or just didn't have enough time to adjust my body or I held too much water during my flight, which was close to the show. I don't know. It's guessing for me as well. So that wasn't really an explanation, but there is this other comment that I found very interesting. Somebody asked him, somebody actually told him that it's not his fault, that it is his coach's fault. And you guys all know that from this year, his coach is Chad Nichols, who is also the coach of Big Ramy, who also failed this year. So this guy says that the William Bonnick should change a coach and the reason why he plays this low and looked this bad was his coach, Chad Nichols. And then Bonnick defends Chad Nichols. He says, brother, please don't say things that's not right. I was already declining. Honestly, I gave up last year until a friend convinced me and introduced me to my coach. Uh, I came second at the Arnold Classic and I won Boston Pro. Without him, I would be sitting home with a beer stomach watching the Mr. Olympia with popcorn in my hand. It's nobody's fault but mine. I can only thank Chad for being in my corner because I wouldn't be here this year at all. I appreciate your concern, but don't bring a good man down when they don't deserve it. As for now, what we got from Chad Nichols regarding William Bonac and Big Remy is radio silence. No comment from Chad Nichols. We have no idea what he thinks went wrong with these guys. I hope we will finally get a response. I hope he's gonna do a little interview with somebody or a podcast. I don't know. I hope we can hear his thoughts because he's responsible for these two guys. He is basically the only person that can tell us what happened. And then James also said this that it was basically a coaching mistake by Chad Nichols he doesn't know what they did in the last week I mean him and Big Grammy and it was probably the same thing with William Bonac I mean this is just speculation I have no idea what the hell went wrong I would like to hear it though from Chad Nichols I hope he's going to make a statement finally it's been a week and so far no words of him radio silence nothing we didn't hear anything from Chad Nichols so I hope it's going to be soon, I hope he's going to make a statement, but as it is for now, William Bonac doesn't really blame him. Big Ram is not the type that would say anything like that or comment in the comment section, so we got nothing from Big Ramy. For now, we have no idea what went wrong with these guys, and again, I hope soon we're gonna find out something. As soon as we do, I will make a video about it, so guys, stay tuned, subscribe. I know majority of you guys, probably all of you guys, don't follow man's physique. You know, it's more of a modeling thing than, than bodybuilding. But there was an interesting result in the Mr. Olympia that I wanted to share it with you guys and hear your thoughts. This is the Mr. Olympia champion in man's physique. And when I saw this, I was like, I don't really follow this division, but I'm pretty sure these guys had better Olympia champions. Uh, Jeremy Buendia, for example, uh, Brandon Hendrickson, there were some really good guys but this one, this time, I don't know. I mean, this guy seems to have synthol delts or just really dominant delts that kind of look like they're oil. Or maybe he's injecting gear in his delts, I don't know. But overall, like, he has no calves. His legs are super small. 
And if you take a look at any comment section of any post where he was mentioned, everybody, almost everybody is saying that Brandon Hendrickson was robbed, that this guy doesn't deserve to be the winner of the Mr. Olympia, that his delts are suspicious, that his calves are non-existent, that his legs are too small. I admit I have no idea what the judging criteria in man's physique is like, but I don't think I like this physique very much, I think we did have better men's physique champions before and I don't see why this guy won. If you guys follow men's physique, you know more about it, tell me down below in the comment section. You can try and explain to me and to other people why was this the outcome, how did this guy win, because I really don't get it. I mean, yeah, I know the legs are not really being judged in men's physique, but I mean, take a look at these two physiques. It just does look more aesthetic when somebody has decent legs and some calves. I mean, calves are being showed on that stage. And from what I heard from some other men's physique competitors that I know personally, they are working on their calves because it does add to the overall look. And I think it really does. I mean, if the calves are not being judged, why these guys are wearing shorts? Why they aren't wearing pants? So, I mean, it's really hard to understand the judging here, and when you look at this photo, I mean, I would say Brandon has more, uh, more balanced physique, you know, more aesthetic physique, Brandon Hendrickson right there on the right, and the guy that won has two big delts, they look like Sintel, they probably aren't Sintel, but they look like there's something wrong with them, and overall, as far as the aesthetics, the, the overall shape of the physiques, I just think Brandon Hendrickson's physique looks overall better for men's physique, it looks more aesthetic, it looks more balanced, it looks more symmetrical, uh, I don't like this guy's delts, I don't like his small, small, tiny legs, I, I don't like his non-existent calves, and overall, the shape, the structure, the genetics of Brandon are just better, if you ask me, but again, I don't really follow this division, this, this category, I don't know what is the judging criteria, if you guys follow it, you can tell me down below, and if you don't follow it, and you have opinion on it, you can of course also share your thoughts like I just did, and tell me what do you think, why this guy won, and which physique do you prefer, even though you don't follow man's physique, just give me your thoughts on this. It was only yesterday that I made a video about Ian Valier talking about his back and his overall look at the Mr. Olympia stage and he made a little comment on his Instagram but right after I published my video Fuad Abiyad posted a podcast with Ian Valier in which he explains in depth what exactly went wrong, what happened to his physique and he explains every detail. I wanna say he blames it on his coach Patrick Tour, but it was protocol that he did that last day uh, as far as water manipulation and electrolyte manipulation diuretic use how all that affected his look and then how his look affected his mind so i want to show you this little part of the podcast where he explains what exactly went wrong if you want to watch the whole thing it's on Fuad Abiyad's youtube channel but i'm going to show you this little part where he explains what exactly went wrong in terms of his protocol check it out to be quite frank, what happened was we had reduced my sodium by a third on the Thursday, which really we don't typically do. Um, sodium water for me need to be consistent variables and they, they can't really dip yeah. down too much, uh, especially for extended periods of time. We got away with it for one day with the reduced sodium. And then Friday morning, I actually woke up looking awesome. And I think because usually I wake up pretty flat and build throughout the day. I woke up actually pretty full. So I think that scared us a little bit. And it was like, we have to not spill by yeah. 9 p.m. Don't want to go too far, yeah. So then we back kept the sodium backed off, kept the, brought the water down, and the meals were on the moderate side. You know, there was active diuretics there, plus reduction of sodium, plus reduction of water, plus mm. the meals weren't as big. So... And I, and I could feel I was on the flatter side, like, you know, backstage and pumping up and I could feel it just wasn't coming to life. All right. So, so far he explained that it was a protocol mistake. He didn't really explain what happened to his back. As you can see right here, it was really flat. And he didn't explain what was wrong with his posing, especially in the posing routine. But overall, he looked very uncomfortable, very clumsy. And in this next part of the video, he explains that and also he kind of does put blame on Patrick Tour. He's going to say that he did make mistakes in posing and that is only his own fault, which means everything else, as far as his look, as far as how that look affected his mentality, that is on somebody else. And who else is responsible for Ian's look but his coach, Patrick Tour? Check this part of the video out. 
And then, you know, obviously I made some posing errors and stuff like that. There's no, you know, no responsibility other than my own. I mean, we tried to change a lot of things in my posing in too short of a time. And when it got close, then I like, I, really what it was is when I came out initially, I felt like I had a bit of flatness in my chest. So I shied away from opening up with my front lat, which I... And then he continues explaining why he was posing the way he was posing, what his rationale was. If you guys want to watch the whole thing, it is on Fuad Abia's YouTube channel, but as for now, this is it, which basically means it is his protocol. It's his coach's fault. Uh, it's Patrick Tour. I, I like Patrick Tour. I learned a lot from listening to him, and I think he's a good coach, but this year he failed with Ian. We gotta be honest. He also failed with him at that Tampa Pro where Hunter beat him. So... Patrick Tour, I mean, he's a good coach, but he's not on a level of, for example, Honey Rambo. Take a look at what Honey Rambo did with his three guys. He picked them all completely perfectly. I gotta say, Ian did have a lot of success with Patrick Tour, but I think it also needs to be said that this year it wasn't Ian's fault that he looked the way he looked. It was his coach's mistake. Oh yeah, I got this for you guys as well, somebody sent me a screenshot of Ian's story where he talks about his cycle, as you can see it's pretty moderate, it's pretty mild cycle for somebody on that level, I would expect more, but this doesn't mean that he wasn't using 3 times this uh, like 8 weeks out, I think this was just for cosmetic purposes at 2 weeks out, uh, less things you use, you're gonna have less water retention, so maybe he was using a lot more before, so I don't know, this was just what he was doing at 2 weeks out, he decided to share it with his audience, so you can see it right here, you can tell me whatever you think about this in the comment section down below, if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you guys want to see more bodybuilding videos like this one you can show me some support by subscribing to this channel i'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers so if you guys watch my videos but you're not subscribed please subscribe to my channel it will mean a lot to me once again thank you guys for watching all the best and bye bye